Hi guys, this is Sam and welcome to WingLogic. In today's grammar video, I want to start having a deeper look at the ideas and concepts that modal verbs express and the subtle differences that they convey. Today we will be looking at can and could for ability and also when we can and must use to be able to and to manage to instead. I know it may not sound as advanced a topic as the ones that we usually cover, but I think it's very important for three reasons. First, so you can actually use them correctly. Second, so teachers can help students learn them better and they can explain them to them better. And third, for the language geeks out there, just like me, who like to learn a little bit more of the philosophy of languages, this is a great opportunity for that. So please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and let's get started. Modal verbs express different concepts such as ability, possibility, certainty, permission, obligation. And although some of these concepts are fairly similar across languages, meaning that you can sort of translate them directly from one language to another, at least in the languages that I speak, I think it's very important for learners to understand how modal verbs work in their own language and what kind of concepts they deliver, because that will help them understand them better and they can then use their English counterparts much better. When Italians learn English, the direct translation of the verb can that they're given is poter. In English, if I say I can swim, this can gives us the idea of a general continuous ability, something that you can do all the time as part of your life skills. In Italian, if I say io posso notare, where posso is the conjugated form of can, actually this doesn't give us the idea of a general continuous ability, but the concept of a permission or a temporary ability. In Italian, if you want to give the idea of a general continuous ability, you need to use the verb so, which is to know. So it would translate into something like I know to swim. When I ask my Italian students how they express general ability in Italian, they can't really answer me because they've never really had to think about it before. So they don't really make the mental connection between the fact that when in Italian they say no, as in I know to swim, that expresses ability that we express with can. And that's why they might make little mistakes like this one. I think it's very important for us to understand how we express these concepts in our language so we can better understand when to use which verb in English. In order to understand the difference between can, could, to be able to and to manage to, we're going to start from can and could and please remember that today we're only talking about the concept of ability. I'm a singer, so we will use this concept to create sentences around it. We will start easy. In English, can gives the idea of a general continuous ability or skill, just like we said before. And this skill is given by nature or by constant training. So if I say I can sing, this means that in my general life I have the ability to sing. I can't sing means that I don't have this general ability in my life. Can also gives the idea of a temporary ability. If I say I can sing today, that might mean that up until yesterday I didn't have the ability to sing anymore, maybe because I'd lost my voice, but now my voice is back and so is my ability to sing. I can sing this difficult song today because I've practiced a lot means that generally and usually I don't have the ability to sing this song, but I do today because I've practiced a lot. I can't sing today means that I usually have the ability to sing, but I don't today because maybe I've lost my voice. When you learn English, they tend to teach you to use the verb can in relation to the ability of speaking a language or playing an instrument. But in actual fact, we tend to omit it when we speak. So you can say, I can speak English, but we very commonly say, I speak English. You can say, I can't speak English, but also I don't speak English. I can ask you, do you play the guitar? or can you play the guitar? So it's not a mistake to use can in these cases, but you can definitely omit it if you want to. Let's have a look at to be able to. 
Just like can, the present simple of to be able to conveys the idea of a general continuous ability. You can say, I can sing, but also I'm able to sing. However, using to be able to in this case is very heavy and not common at all. So although it's correct, I would suggest you do not use it. To be able to puts emphasis on the ability because it's something surprising, unusual or something that not many people can do. If I say I'm able to sing Pavarotti without even warming up my voice, that means that my ability to sing is so great that I can sing such a hard song without preparing first. So in that case, I'm really stressing the fact that I can sing very, very well. In this case, you can still use the verb can, but again, if you want to put a bit more drama and a bit more emphasis, you can absolutely use the verb to be able to. We use can in the present and could in the past to talk about a single action related to the five senses. It's very common to say, I can hear a sound rather than I hear a sound. I could taste onion in the soup yesterday, I can't see you in the dark, and when I had Covid, I couldn't smell anything. And this is where the interesting stuff starts. We use can or could with verbs related to thought processes, for example, understand, believe, follow, remember. We can say I can't or don't understand what the problem is. I couldn't or didn't believe that he'd left. Specifically with understand and remember, we can use don't or can't in the negative, whereas with follow and believe, it's very common to use can't or couldn't. I can't quite picture a situation where I would say I didn't believe that he'd left. I would definitely say I couldn't believe that he'd left. When tell means to know, see, notice, we use it with can or could. I can tell by the way he looks at you that he loves you. That means that by the way he looks at you, I understand, I notice, I know that he loves you. The present simple of the verb to manage to do something is used to put emphasis on the ability to do something difficult. Every time I'm nervous, you manage to calm me down. We can also use it to create a little bit more drama in a sort of complaint. If I say, no matter how well I prepare my presentation at home, I always manage to screw it up in the meeting. Could expresses general continuous ability in the past. Before my surgery, I could sing very well, means that before my surgery, I had the constant ability to sing, but I don't anymore after the surgery. When I was younger, I could put my feet behind my head. With this same meaning, we can use was or were able to do something, and this puts emphasis on something impressive. So, you can say, at the age of five, I could already speak five languages. This is absolutely fine. But because this is something great that not many people can achieve, you could say, at the age of five, I was already able to speak five languages. But managed to, in the past, does not give the idea of a general continuous ability in the past. Saying, before my surgery, I could sing very well, is not the same as saying, before my surgery, I managed to sing very well. And we will soon see why. Managed to, in the past, expresses the idea of a past ability on a single occasion. With this same meaning, we can also use was able to, but we can't use could. So technically, we can't say yesterday I could clean the house in just one hour, because this refers to one single occasion, one single event. So could is not correct. We can and must, however, say yesterday I managed to clean the house in just one hour or yesterday I was able to clean the house in just one hour. Now, this is what pure English grammar dictates, but informally, sometimes we do use could, talking about a past ability on a single occasion. But since I'm not sure whether it would be considered a mistake in an English exam, I suggest that you stick to manage to or was able to. But when we talk about a past inability to do something on a single occasion, we can say couldn't, didn't manage to and wasn't able to. I couldn't reach him on the phone, 
I didn't manage to reach him on the phone, I wasn't able to reach him on the phone, are all correct. Couldn't is the most common option because it's quicker but it's very flat, it doesn't add any emotion, drama or emphasis. When you want these elements in your sentence, it's probably better to use didn't manage to or wasn't able to. The police, for example, would say we were not able to locate the murder weapon. And now you're probably going to hate me for these complicated tricks. But although we've said that we can't use could to talk about a past ability on a single occasion, we can actually use it in the construction could only. So I can say I could only find very expensive tickets. And we can use it to refer to a past ability on a single occasion in subordinate clauses. If I say she was extremely happy that you could come to her party yesterday, she was extremely happy is the main clause of this sentence. That you could come to the party is a secondary or subordinate clause, which is why in this case we can use could. You can also use managed to and was able to, but could, again, because it's the quickest, is always the most popular option. The negative of managed to in the past can be I didn't manage to or I couldn't manage to. And to manage on its own means to deal with the situation and survive. So if you ask me, do you need help? And I say, I can manage. It means that I will be okay. I will be able to deal with the situation and survive on my own. Now it's time to talk about future ability. When we want to talk about a future ability based on a present ability, decision or situation, we can use the verb can. You can pass tomorrow's test if you study hard. This means that the future ability is tomorrow, uh, so the ability of passing the test. And it's based on the fact that you study hard now. So it's a present condition, situation. If I ask you, can you meet me tomorrow? I use can because I'm asking you if tomorrow you will have the ability to do it based on what you know today. In these cases, you can also use will be able to, but it's extremely uncommon. But you must use will be able to and you can't use can when you talk about a future ability that is not based on the present. At the end of my internship, I will be able to use the software correctly. You can't say can because there is no correlation to a present situation. You're only talking about the end of the internship, which is simply in the future with no connection to now. Could not only refers to the past, but it also refers to a condition. So it means you would be able to. If I say, if you spoke German, you could be working in Germany, it means that if you spoke German, you would be able to work in Germany right now. And last but not least, the expressions can always and could always express the idea that you can do something if there's nothing better to do. If it's too expensive to travel abroad this year, we can always or could always go to the seaside next to my town means that this option, the one of going to the seaside, is not ideal, it's not the best, but it is the best option that you have given the circumstances. And that's it for today. I really hope this video has helped you understand the little differences between these verbs a little bit better. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And do let me know in the comments if you have any questions regarding this topic and if you knew all the uses of the verbs can, could, be able to and manage to. I will see you on Thursday and Monday with my quick vocabulary videos and next Tuesday with my explanation one.